All right, sorry about that. So this is part two. I had some major technical issues. I had to select an option to actually repair the video footage uh, of this particular um, YouTube upload that I'm going to have on YouTube. I had to actually select an option to repair it because the file had been corrupted coincidentally. I'm making a very um, profound video that is pretty much exposing the corruption that it, uh, these law enforcement uh, police departments are involved in in reference to being involved in organized stalking and harassment. So where I left off was I was going to activate the camera feature on this app so that I can show you guys official documentation from the city of Ferris. Hopefully I can get that camera to turn around. Okay. I don't know why I'm not able to have it magnified. It's very strange. Let me see if I can move it. Okay. It looks like it's doing something. Bear with me. I'm just trying to... I should have prepared better, but... Okay, that's as, as wide as it's going to get. Okay, so basically, I was going to show you guys official uh, an official police report from the city of Ferris. Okay, so here we see the city of Ferris insignia. On this, police, on this police report, there are six pages total, okay? So the actual section I'm wanting to go to is, one second, is where one of the responding officers, which I believe was Officer Banks, uh, just one second. Is it the second page? Okay, here it is. All right. So it was the third page. This is page, no, I'm sorry, fourth page. So this is page four of six. Hopefully you guys can see that on the camera. It looks like it's kind of blurry. All right, so basically, as I was saying earlier, I'm trying to expose that Brooks Williams was involved in organized stalking and harassment, okay? He got an alert on his cell phone that I was in the area, all right? And he took it upon himself to have an encounter with me for the sole purpose of provoking me. These individuals know the persecution that targeted individuals have been through. So in a mocking manner, in a sarcastic manner, they try to have these encounters with you to find out, oh, are you okay? You know, are you handling your targeting okay? Is everything all right? They're, they're not checking on you because they're actually concerned for your welfare. They're, they're mocking you. They're making fun of your plight and the situation that you've been dealing with for years in reference to these individuals being dispatched out to you to make your life a living hell. That's all they're doing. And they're looking for a reaction so they can say, or point the finger and say, ha we told you he was crazy. We told you he was hostile, okay? That's all they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing, okay? So that's why I wanted to make this individual sweat you know, by going further and, and looking into having charges filed against him, okay, to try to expose this. I was hoping that the district attorney would actually investigate this thing and, and find out, okay, what business did Brooks Williams have over in that area, okay? Again, Brooks Williams has three pay grades. He is a, just the chaplain of the city of Ferris, a police chaplain. He's a first responder, and he's also a city manager, okay? So the area that I was posted up at, come to find out from one of the officers, is the hood part of Ferris, okay? I know damn well that Mr. Brooks Williams does not live in the hood. What, does he have a trap house in there? Is he, does, he, does he have a place where, where he's operating and selling drugs out of or something? In the report, it said that this dude was on his way home. He had gotten off of work from the city and he was en route to his house, okay? What business did he have of going out of his way to come to the hood section of Ferris to where I was parked at? That was something that the district, uh, that the chief, I'm sorry, his title was chief investigator. He's not actually the DA, Mr. Brian Norris, okay? That was something that I asked him and he could not answer my question. He went as far as to say that, oh, that has no bearing on the, 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 the accusation of, of criminal charge uh, being placed against him. So basically he was saying that was irrelevant to what I was, the complaint that I was making. But it's very relevant because I'm trying to expose that he was involved in stalking and harassment. Okay, so let's read what Officer Banks says to me. This is the actual officer that advised me 
that I was in the hood section of Ferris. OK, it says and I'm sorry if this uh, this app uh, camera is not showing this legibly, but I will read it and trust that I'm reading the truth. Officer Banks advises Ochuco that probably the reason that Williams approached him was based on Ochuco being parked in the flats, part of Ferris, which is one of the worst areas in Ferris or the hood of Ferris. OK. I know damn well Mr. Brooks Williams does not live in the hood. This dude has three different pay grades. OK. He went out of his way in relation to where the city hall is located to have an encounter with me. Mr. Brooks don't live nowhere near where I was at. I assure you. And if any of you want to do your due diligence and look into that, I assure you he don't live in that area and you'll discover the same thing. So that was the whole point of me bringing that up is that he was involved in organized stalking and harassment. He got an alert on his phone that I was in that area and was either dispatched out to that location or he took it upon himself to come out there for the sole purpose of effing with me. That's all it was. Let me continue to read that, that, the, the, uh, this paragraph here. The Hood of Ferris, adding that he looked suspicious parked there and that Williams approaching him was not harassment. Okay? So, there you have it. Let me continue. Let me go back to uh, the audio recorded call between myself and Mr. Brian Norris the chief investigator for the uh, for Ellis County. Just one second. I'm going to go ahead and X out of this uh, camera. That's no longer needed because we're now just going to continue to listen to uh, the audio recording between myself and Mr. Brooks. Just one second while I attempt to locate that. Here it is, and we stopped at 6.30. Let me push play. Bear Hello. with me. Chilling. Get down to uh, 630. He approached me? Yeah. If he had an encounter with me, I was there we go. To know that address. Pay attention. Because um as shortly after he left, um two uh Ferris police officers showed up. Okay. And I showed them the video because they said something about they had gotten a call. So I was assuming that it was Mr. Williams that that uh, called, but come to find out, it wasn't Mr. Williams from what I read in this report. So I just thought it was very strange. And uh, the officers were interested in seeing the video uh, because they said something about their sergeant may be interested in seeing that video. So, with, with, with. so how did you find out it was Burks Williams who, who was the individual who made contact with? How did I find out? Um, I believe that I believe the officer told me that that was the I believe the city manager or whatever. Okay. When he approached you, did he have any type of uniform, badge, insignia on? Brooks Williams when he approached me? Yeah. Yeah, he he had on a, it was like a polo looking shirt, kind of like a dark. I want to say it was either a polo shirt or a t-shirt, uh, navy okay. blue, and it, there was a shiny badge that was on his shirt. You, you can see it through the rear view mirror. So the way I had my camera positioned, it was through the side, side view mirror, actually. So he was standing in front of my driver's side, so you could see the reflection from the mirror. I guess, I guess my question is, his interactions with you were, what, uh, what are we up to, and are you all right? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Did he, did he give you commands to step out of the vehicle? No. Did he demand to see your driver's license, uh, insurance, anything like that? Not at all. Okay, so he's just making casual contact with you. Right. Again, this dude was off duty, okay? He went out of his way to have an encounter with me. I get the questioning that he's doing. That's part of, you know, a defense attorney's questioning of the uh, of the uh, the complainant or what have you. Okay, it's very slick. It's it's geared towards throwing off the jury and whatnot. Okay, the bottom line is the whole the whole the whole thing of me reasoning for me uh, having this uh, referred to the district attorney was so that they could investigate further and find out what was Brooks Williams doing prior to his encounter with me. Okay, and again when I asked. 
this chief investigator, Brian Norris of Ellis County, when I asked him, where did Brooks Williams, where does he live in relation to where I was located? Because it was said in the report that he was on his way home. So you mean to tell me he went out of his way to have an encounter with me and then go home? He came to the hood? What was he there buying crack? Was was he trying to pick up prostitutes? I mean, why did he have to come through the hood before he went home? And if you look, if you do research and look into where the city hall is located, where where Mr. Brooks Williams works, okay, where, which is where he's stationed, you will see that in relation to where he lives, which I don't know where he lives, but I know he doesn't live in the hood, having three pay grades. Use your brains and think about this, okay? That That's the whole point of me doing this is to expose these law enforcement officers involved in this organized stalking and harassment. They have to keep all this covert for a reason because they know that they are violating constitutional law by having these little programs out where they're stalking and harassing and intentionally provoking innocent citizens. They have to keep it undercover. And I'm trying to expose it. That's the whole point of my channel. It's to make people aware that this stuff is going on. It's treasonous. You have American citizens doing this to other American citizens. These people need to be killed. They are treasonous. They have committed treason. They are the real terrorists. They are out on the streets. If you see the stuff that I go through on the streets at night while y'all are asleep. Just traveling from point A to point B. These people trying to run me off the road, trying to do any and everything they can to have law enforcement involvement to have me arrested. Because I'm a human being, because I have a right to be angry at crimes being committed against me, at atrocities being committed against me, rightfully so. I'm going to stop. Let me finish playing this. Okay. Well, Anthony, I want to see the video which you're talking about. But everything you're telling me right now, mm. it, it'd be no different than me walking up to someone at Walmart in your same description. If you walking up, and I don't, let's say I'm a citizen, but I have a shirt on, a polo shirt that says I work for the Ellis County District Attorney's Office. Mm. And I just say, hey, what are we doing, man? You, you have a right to go, ah, nothing. Or better yet, you don't have to say a word. No, there's a difference because Mr. Brooks Williams got alerted of where I was at and he took it upon himself to come harass me. It had nothing to do with his concern for my welfare. I assure you, my windows were not fogged up. The video that I provided on YouTube and the same video that I provided to the chief investigator, Brian Norris, who I'm talking to in this conversation, okay, could clearly see that there was no fog on my windows. Now, granted, I had sunshades up on my windshield there was no fog at all my windows were cracked okay it's it's bs trust me go back and look at the video and you'll see for yourself there wasn't fog on that windshield now if you start to give me directives commands uh, to do something anthony <laughs> right the man tells you why he puts handcuffs on you quote unquote says you're not free to leave you're detained uh -huh. I was detained because he used his, his vehicle to block my vehicle off. You know what I'm saying? I, I had nowhere to go. That That is a clear sign of detainment. That's the same stuff that law enforcement officers do, right? They'll pull up in a certain manner to kind of block you off so that you know that you're in the presence of law enforcement and you have to answer to their authority. That's the same manner in which this individual pulled up. He was right up on my bumper. Go back and look at the video with the emergency lights on. And this dude was off duty. He wasn't even on duty as a first responder, chaplain, or city manager. He was off duty. All right? He went out of his way to come visit me in the hood. Because apparently Mr. Brooks Williams, with three pay grades, has a house in the hood. Use your brains. Sorry. Dang. I... Ugh. Hello? Oh, but basically it's saying, hey, we're working. Yeah, yes, sir. Texas statute is very clear. Pull up in front of my vehicle and find out. Like One second. Now, I'm trying to get to where I left off. Sorry about that, y'all. He starts giving you directives, 
command. Okay, that sounds uh, about right. Do something, Anthony. Right. Demands to see your license. Puts handcuffs on you. Quote unquote says you're not free to leave. You're detained. Uh -huh. Yeah, we got problems here. Okay. Uh, but I want to be fair here. I want to see this video. Okay, I can okay. I can definitely send that to you. But I, let me also say this: Was it sure. appropriate for him to pull up in front of my vehicle and cut on emergency lights? Though that's what I'm trying to find out. Like, where was the? Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal, and and Texas statute is very clear: you can have lights on a vehicle, okay? And you you made mention about not only it being being red and blue, but you said there was some amber to it. Yeah, yes, sir. And that is a part of, of what we term uh, city vehicles or city or municipal vehicles that do road construction, county commissioners. They can have that. They don't have a right to detain you. They don't have a right to pull you over. But basically it's saying, hey, we're working here. From what you're describing to me is this. He made contact... But he wasn't on duty. Well, hey, we're working here, but the dude was not on duty, okay? He was not on duty. He was on his way home from what the report said. You guys can request the, the reports. If you think I'm making this stuff up or you think this is just... Look into it yourselves. That's all I'm saying. Contact with you probably wouldn't have been the best idea in the world for him to come and do that because that's kind of me, I wouldn't do that unless uh, I have my, my number one, my gun on me. Right. Because I'm not going to make contact with anyone. Sure. Uh, I would identify you. Uh, exactly. Okay. Th this is this is another big, uh, a major uh, point here. Okay. Mr. Brooks Williams felt comfortable encountering me, encountering me because he had prior knowledge of me. Okay. The police have prior knowledge of me b before they even get to my location. They know that I'm a, I'm a TI or I'm on a watch list or whatever. They know that I'm not known to be hostile with They have a profile of you, okay? And even a psychological profile. They know that I'm not hostile towards police. And there's so much evidence that I put on my video with my encounters. Yes, I assert my rights, but I am always respectful to law enforcement. You never see me going for my gun or, or anything crazy like that, okay? So that's why Mr. Brooks Williams felt so comfortable encountering me in the hood of Ferris because he already knew about me. Did you hear what that DA said? He probably wouldn't have done it, especially if he didn't have a fire, you know, if he didn't have a firearm on him or whatever. Okay? This is very revealing stuff. Let me continue playing this. 1051, in case it... One second. I, you know, your driver's license, all that good stuff. But I would have pulled you out of the car if I had probable cause. Right. You just being pulled on the side of the road is not necessarily, in my view, probable cause. But I wouldn't there. Right. But for him just to make casual contact with you, mm -hmm. I don't know if there is a violation of the law. But I want to be fair, and I want to see the video you're talking about. Okay, okay. Because I know police vehicles have the amber lights, too. I've seen police vehicles that have they that. They do, but so. but so do other vehicles. The only thing is, if he, if he were driving that vehicle and he pulled you over, mm -hmm. oh yeah, we'd be talking about a different situation. Right. But him, for just to do what he did, uh -huh. probably is not the best for his own safety. I wouldn't have done that. Right, right. But is there a violation? Exactly. Okay. The DA just straight this this chief investigator. I keep calling him DA. He works for the DA's office. He's a chief investigator for the DA's office in Ellis County. Okay. Let me be clear. So he just said he wouldn't have done that. Why did Brooks Williams do it? Why did Brooks Williams go out of his way? He's already off from work. He's supposed to be headed home to his two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar house, probably worth more than that. With some, with some acreage to it. He went out of his way to come to the hood to have an encounter with me. To the hood of Ferris, okay? Officer Banks told me 
I had no uh, knowledge of Ferris, uh, Texas personally. I don't know where the hoods of Ferris, Texas are located or none of that. OK, Officer Banks specifically said. Probably the reason that Williams approached him was based on Ochuco being parked in the flats, parts of Ferris, which is one of the worst areas in Ferris or the hood of Ferris. OK. Let me finish playing this. Sure. I'm going to give you my email address. Okay. Let me grab something to write with real sure. quick. And no one's going to know about this, Anthony. This is you and me and the Ranger. And I'll have to have to involve the district attorney and advise her of what's going on. <laughs> Nobody's going to know about it, Bob. But uh, the city of Ferris, because I've already complained with the city of Ferris City Hall. Okay. Their police department. So. You're wrong there, Mr. Norris. They they already knew about it before it even got to you. So that validates my claim of telling you that I've been receiving a lot of retaliatory <phone rings> actions against me in reference to looking into these matters and bringing up these charges against this city manager, okay? But I will be in contact with you after. It may be tomorrow before I do this. Sure. But I want you to send this you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. My email address is my first name, Brian, B R Y A N, okay. dot N O R R I S, okay. and then at mm -hmm. C O dot Ellis dot TX dot Got it. Let me look at that first and let, and then I'm probably going to have some more questions after that, okay? Not a problem. So are you the, what, are you the assistant DA or? No, I am the chief investigator for this, for this county. Okay. The chief investigator at the district attorney's office. Got it. So this information comes to me. We, we don't typically investigate cases. What we do is we review cases to see is there enough for an indictment and then we set the trial? Right. But if there is allegations of impropriety done by elected officials, uh -huh. public officials, that would come under either my auspice or the rankings. Gotcha. But I, I, I don't want to say, yes, something happened here, uh, but I also don't want to say it, it hasn't happened. Okay. But uh, let me look at that. Let me see that, and then you and I are going to speak again. Fair enough? Sounds good. Fair enough. Thank you, sir. Hey, thank you, Anthony. Okay. Hey, Anthony, give me your date of birth, too. Uh, it's February 24th. Why does this man need my date of birth? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's, he's trying to look up as much as he can on my, you know, about me and try to use that as a means to whatever anyway so that's pretty much the end of it so we're at 13:55. it was just not very much time left of that i'm not trying to disclose my date of birth on on this but um so yeah there you have it so there was one more conversation that i had with uh the chief investigator brian norris of ellis county and i'm gonna play that it's only about three or four minutes long i was actually in the grocery store when he called me so let me get to that video so this is the conclusion of his research and investigation into the matter and let me see where it's at here it is it's actually almost five minutes long so here's the results of what i was told in reference to filing charges against this uh brooks williams hello uh who's calling Yeah, time is I'm so sorry that it's low. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's from his end, okay? Because the other conversations we've had, the you know his his tone was was pretty. The volume of of his tone was pretty adequate. Um, so I'm not sure if it was because I was in the grocery store or what, or maybe he manipulated his. I don't know, but I'm sorry that the volume is so low. You may have to like use headphones to listen in or just maybe download a volume a volume booster app 
to to amplify the volume, but I just wanted to apologize for that. That wasn't anything that was my fault. Sorry, Mr. Norris. Hey, uh, do you remember speaking with me a couple weeks ago? Absolutely, yes, sir. Okay. I did some checking in to everything. Uh, reviewed your videos, reviewed everything. There is not a criminal violation of the law that has occurred. Uh-huh. Uh, I see where you came about what you did in your thought process. But due to the fact that there's got to be certain things where there's got to be Clearly, an explanation of defining uh, impersonating peace officers and the criteria is far from being met. You know, number one, you need to identify yourself as a police officer. Right. And the questions we ask you were questions that I may ask someone if I pulled over on the side of the road and I saw someone uh, with their just pulling there, just going in and saying, hey, Okay. Sure. Can I ask you a question? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so he didn't get a call as a first responder to my location. Um, in the report, it said that he was on his way home. Did you actually investigate to find out if, in fact, the route that he took is uh, en route to his home? Bam! Bam! That That's the whole point of me having these charges filed so that the people in the district attorney's office can do their investigation to find out what was Brooks Williams doing prior to his encounter with me. See, he's doing all this, 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 uh, this, this, this show in reference to all oh, the questions that the defense attorney will ask. That's a very important question. OK, and that's pretty standard. What was the individual doing prior to the incident or prior to the encounter? OK. And watch what this district attorney says when I ask him about what was Brooks Williams doing prior to the encounter. And it was said in the report that he was on his way home. Why did Brooks Williams take a try to take go out his way to go through the hood only to drive out of the hood to go back to where he really lives? You get what I'm saying? Let's see what the D.A. says. That has no bearing on the, on the office. It has what? It has no bearing on the offense? Okay. You hear what he said? It has no bearing on the offense whatsoever. Okay? See, I had to be, I had to, I'm trying to expose the gang stalking, right? I can't just tell this DA, hey, I'm being gang stalked. I think Brooks Williams was gang stalking me. You have to go about this in a very particular and certain manner. Okay? You got to be wise about it because... If there's certain trigger words that you might use that these people can use against you to say that you're crazy. OK, so that's why I went through the measure of let me go ahead and get file, charges filed against this individual so that an investigation can be launched so they can find out what this dude was doing prior to his encounter with me. And maybe that will expose or reveal more. But the fact that this chief investigator for the district attorney's office for Ellis County could not answer my question. And he totally discarded it by saying that it had no bearing on, on, on this matter. That is a major red flag. And I'm pretty sure most of you, of all of you, will agree with what I'm saying. Okay? Let me, let me continue playing this. I mean, whether your direction to travel has nothing to do with... Uh, I see where you're going with that, but that has no bearing criteria to build up the, uh, uh, the criteria for impersonating peace officers. Okay. When you, when, really when you say that you see where I'm going with that, could you elaborate on that more? Yeah. Uh, I see where you're saying that that was his normal rate of travel. That's not normally where he goes. Uh-huh. And in other words, he was driving around trying to look for things. Yeah. I don't know where he lives. I don't care. Uh, the right. OK. He said he doesn't know where he went or he doesn't care. Right. But it's important because that would lead more questioning as to, OK, if you don't live in that area, you get what I'm saying? Maybe this is something that would have been brought up if it actually went to court. I get what the district, uh, this chief investigator is doing 
He's only wanting information that's pertinent to the accusation that's being made, which is impersonating a police officer. That's all he's looking for, okay? But again, I had to be smart and I just wanted to show my viewers the, the, the bullshit and the fuckery that's involved with this. Excuse my language. But these people know exactly what they're doing, okay? Had he looked into that further, it would have been very, it would have been very questionable. As, okay, why is this individual coming to the hood? You don't live in the hood, Mr. Brooks Williams. Why did you come to the hood in the first place? If that's out of the route or way of, of, the, of the way to your house, okay? That's all I was I was trying to get at. But he was very clever in his investigations. He knew exactly what to leave out. All right. So hopefully the, you guys are understanding what I'm what I'm getting at or what I'm trying to expose here. Let me continue. And once again, I lost my uh, my marker here. But I got to try to find it. One second. Hello. With, uh, I see where you're going with that. Sounds so about right. That has no bearing on the criteria. Okay. When you when, really, when you say that you see where I'm going with that, could you elaborate on that more? Yeah, uh, I see where you're saying that that was his normal rate of travel. That's not normally where he goes. Uh huh. And in other words, he was driving around trying to look for things. Yeah. I don't know where he lived. I don't care. Uh, the, the criteria is very specific on his first name of his officer. He didn't identify himself as a police officer. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh -huh. he, didn't, he didn't verbally detain you. He didn't do anything of that nature. Okay. Uh, but I, I, I see what you're saying with his shirt and stuff like that. But uh, I, I verified it. And there's not a criminal office that has occurred. But I do appreciate you making contact with voicing your frustration and if something similar to that happens in the county again uh, there's always an avenue in which you uh, go and report that uh, report that to the district attorney's office and we will look into it okay yes sir um All right. let, let me see if there was one more thing that i wanted to yes, ask sir. so is that is that proper uh procedure or protocol for him to pull up on a vehicle on the side of the road and he's off duty to, you know, to... What he didn't identify, Anthony, he mm -hmm. did not identify himself as a police officer. And see, that's his whole thing. It's, it's, it's all the, the focal, the focal point of this is that there's been an accusation that's been made that a city manager was impersonating a police officer. So he, he is solely sticking to that realm, okay? He's not going outside of that. He's, he's not trying to look into, okay, why did he come through there? You know, his house isn't there. So why did he have to come through that area of the hood? You get what I'm saying? So that's, that's, he's just sticking solely to the accusation that was made and he's doing his job and I, I can, I can understand, you know, what, what he's doing. Okay. So I can't really knock him for that, but I do know that these people are well aware of these programs that are out here that are considered classified to the public especially to the victim of, of, of this, the one that's going through this harassment, they're not going to disclose it. They will never disclose that stuff. You understand what I'm saying? And my whole point, again, in doing this, I keep reiterating, but it's important, was to expose it. That's, that's all I'm trying to do. And hopefully I've done that. Out of, out of all the videos that I've done, I've, 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 I've endured a lot of uh, bogus police encounters, okay, and then I, I took it upon myself to take the initiative to look further into these matters, whereas before I was not because I was being smart about it. I said, let me build up my evidence. Let me let me build up uh, the claims that I'm that I'm making in reference to this harassment. Let me build that, Let me build that up to a certain point. OK, so that people can clearly see that there's something to this. And then once I get to a certain threshold or area with that, let me dig even deeper. And as you'll come to find out, the digger, the, the, the more, the deeper that you dig off into the rabbit hole, right? The, the deeper you go off into the rabbit hole, what you'll find at the bottom of the pit is serpents. Okay. That's ultimately what I'm trying to get to. 
in all of this crap. When you have questions that are unanswered, when, when things seem very strange or funny or, 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 or things seem to have to be obscured so as to, to keep people from getting to the, the real truth, okay? That's when you need to know that there's something not right with this whole system. It's all corrupt. All the way up to the top is corrupt, okay? That's all I'm trying to expose here. Let me let me finish the last couple minutes of this video and then I'm done. Right. That's not illegal. Checking on the welfare of somebody. If it's natural, if you're if OK, if, if he's a first responder. Right. And he's off duty and he's on his way home and he notices a, a vehicle on the side of the road or whatever. And he takes it upon himself out of the goodness of his heart, you know, to check on this individual. I'm totally fine with that. But I know for a fact that Brooks Williams got alerted that I was in that area based on the evidence and based on the fact that some of the um, crucial questions that I've asked was not being able, uh, was not answered by this district, uh, uh, I'm sorry, by this chief investigator in reference to why he went out of his way to go through the hood to go home. Based on that, that he was not able to answer that question, that lets you know that there's some nefarious, hidden, secretive uh, 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 stuff that's going on with that, okay? I don't care about being checked on if it's a natural encounter. Not that the person is getting an alert, oh, this, this person is a certain type of individual that needs to be checked on. No, that's not right, okay? That is, not, that is illegal. That is a, a violation of a person's constitutional right. OK, it hinders your pursuit of happiness, you know, your right to privacy and all that. Let's conclude this. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Now, if he came to you and said, hey, I'm a police officer, what are you doing here? Give me your ID. Get out of the car. You're not free to leave. Then we're talking about something. Right. Okay. Okay. But the policy and procedures of that department, I'm not talking policy and procedures. I'm just saying, was there a violation of law? I have to believe that it was. Okay. Okay. Understood, Fair Mr. Enough. Norris. Thank you so much for your time and looking into that. Appreciate it. Hey, right, you bet. Thank you. Good luck to you, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Bye. Oh, bye bye. All right. So, so that's the end of that. Okay. A lot of these people are so deceived. They think that they're doing good for the community and engaging in these activities. You know, a, a, a lot of this stuff is uh, funneled down to the community watch groups that are already in neighborhoods, the HOAs and all that kind of crap. Um, they don't realize that they're indulging in evil. You are continually and systematically hounding an individual who just wants to live a simple life, who is in pursuit of a life of happiness and that's being hindered because you're being lied to that this person is you know a pedophile or this person is hostile or, or this person is involved in gangs or is a drug dealer or, or or pimps women out or traffics children okay you are you are creating terrorists because wherever this 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 targeted person goes the same uh, protocols are, are enacted upon this person. And for those people that are weak-minded, you, you're going to end up doing this to the wrong person and they're going to kill you. They will kill you and kill your children because they've snapped. Okay? 
A lot of these people know exactly what they're doing. Make no mistake, all this stuff about demonic possession and all this crap, these people are well aware, a lot, a good majority of them are well aware of what they're doing, okay? They know that what they're doing is evil. But they still continue to do it, right? So, in conclusion, I, I just wanted to put this out here. Again, I do not work with law enforcement. I, I am not a law enforcement officer. I, I used to want to be a cop. I applied for the DEA because I live, I've lived in the hood just like I've lived amongst dominant society. I've lived amongst, you know, higher society, I guess you could say. I, I'm pretty well versed and pretty leveled when it comes to experiencing different cultures and different, um, you know, like uh, uh, social statuses, whether middle class or living amongst the rich or, or the poor. I've lived it all. So I've seen a lot and I know a lot. Okay. I'm trying to expose this thing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help people open up their eyes to the evil that goes along, goes on in this world. There's been so much deception. There has been so much. Um, we've, we've had our eyes closed for a very long time. The enemy is in plain sight. You just have to take the time to unplug yourself from this matrix. Take the time out of your everyday norms and just step outside of yourself and just take a look at the world as a whole. And you'll come to see this evil that has always been around us this whole time. They are your neighbors. There are people at schools. There are people at your workplace. They have their agents everywhere. All you have to do is just take a look. Just open your eyes and look. You people are so comfortable with what you have, right? You're happy. You have good jobs. You have good income. You don't want to ruffle any feathers. Oftentimes, these people have sold out, so they're, they're more than willing to partake in going after individuals that are going against the grain for the greater good. We've, they've enslaved you. You're, you're, you're a slave. You can't do anything of your own free will because they control you. That is wrong. We are free spirits. We were not created to be enslaved. Now, granted, there should be some measure of order, but at the detriment of other people's suffering? That's just not right. There should not be poor people. There should not be people without homes with the technology that we have and the resources that we have in this day and age. There's no way that I could be okay with being a millionaire knowing that there are people out there that can't get a decent meal to eat, that don't have a home to live in. I will never strive for prosperity in this world to, to that level of, of, um, of being rich, knowing that there are other people suffering. I would give up my resources to help other people just so that they can live happy as well. We're all entitled to that, not just a certain group of people. That lets you know that there is a blatant evil in this world that needs to be eradicated. There is a true virus in this world that needs to be eradicated. This earth is beautiful. Look at the nature around you, the oceans, the lakes, the, the, the greenery, the trees. I wake up sometimes and I look around and I'm like, man, there's so much beauty in this world, but yet it's so evil. It just doesn't go together. It needs to be eradicated. Something has to be, good people have to get together to eradicate this thing. The more we continue to turn our cheeks, the more that we continue to be nice to these people, it's not getting you nowhere. It's not getting us nowhere. It's going to continue to be this way because we're accepting it. And they're going after the few that are standing up for righteousness. They're going after the few true patriots of this country, of this world, to disenfranchise them, to destroy them. So that they can have their new world order. So that they continue to uh, so that they can continue to enslave, so that they don't have an enemy that will oppose them. What they're doing is not right. They have to be eradicated, people. 
I'm sorry to say, but that's ultimately what's going to have to happen. Yeah, sure, it's spiritual, right? Everyone's saying it's spiritual, but it's manifested into the physical. And we all know what that's going to lead to. So at some point, it's going to happen. That war is going to happen between light and dark. That is the whole sole purpose of my channel, is to expose this stuff. Screw my struggles and persecutions. I'm trying to bring awareness to this. For those of you that do watch, that have a heart, if you have individuals like me that are fighting for your rights, that are fighting for your freedom, do what you can to help out. I'm trying to last as long as I can in this to expose this. That's what I live for. That is what I totally live for, is to expose this evil. Please open your eyes, man. Open your eyes. That's all I ask. You know that you're doing something right if you get attacked in this world. If you get attacked by the darkness in this world, you know you're on the right path. If you're living comfortably, you have no worries, everything's fine and dandy, something is wrong with that picture. There are people out there suffering. And you should feel obligated to help to do something about it. Man, that's all I got. You guys have a great day. Leave comments. Let me know what you're thinking. I know most of my, a lot of my commenters are perps. I'm, I'm fully aware of that. My views have declined drastically. But nevertheless, I have a job to do. Whether my views have declined drastically does not matter. I know there's somebody out there that's listening that this message is resonating with their spirit and their heart to make a change and to do something about this. Please. That's all I got.